Hi friends, welcome to EduTab. So in this particular video, we shall be discussing about aquaculture in detail. So friends, let us just begin with understanding as to what is aquaculture. So when I talk about aquaculture, it is basically the farming and water of aquatic species. Okay, uh, now this aquatic species can be aquatic plant species as well as animal species. So we are not restricting ourselves to only aquatic animals. Plus, we are not restricting ourselves here to only fishes. No, that is not the case. Okay, it's a broader term. The second thing to note out here is it refers or the environment in which uh, they are cultured is not restricted. It can be in fresh water. It can be in marine water. It can also be in brackish water. Okay, so there's a variety of environment that can be chosen from. And the next important point that you need to note is when I when we talk about culturing an organism, we are meaning that there is some form of intervention in the rearing process that is taking place. And this uh, intervention that we are doing in the rearing process, the ultimate aim for it is to increase production. Okay, for example, we uh, take utmost care in protecting the species against predators. Okay, we ensure regular stocking. We provide them with uh, uh, supplementary feeds. So all these things are done uh, to actually increase the production. Okay, there is a human intervention involved in the entire process. And the farming that is done uh, has actually individual or a corporate ownership of the stock that is being cultivated, right? So the owner can actually decide as to what uh, is to be done with the stock that is being cultivated. So this is in a nutshell about aquaculture. Let us just proceed and have a look at the various classification and the other parameters that are required to be discussed as part of aquaculture. So before we begin further, let us have a look at some of the terms that we shall encounter while going through fisheries chapter. So first we shall talk about the juvenile stages of fish. So when I say juvenile stages of fish, uh, the entire juvenile stage actually lasts till the moment the fish becomes sexually mature. Okay, so once the fish attains sexual maturity, it can be known as an adult fish. Okay, so just have this thing in mind. There are various stages uh, with, uh, through which the fish goes through. So let us have a look at those. Before that, there is a term called fish seed. So uh, you can see, you can hear about this term a lot of times, uh, like uh, uh, the uh, the pond is stocked with fish seed, right? So you need to know what is it. Uh, basically, it refers to the fertilized fish eggs. And colloquially, they can also be called as baby fishes. Okay, very simple. So here, let us just see the stages. Uh, the first is the hatchling stage. Okay, you can see uh, the picture out here. So actually, after the uh, fertilized egg has hatched, larvae emerges out of it. It is also called hatchling. And uh, uh, there is a presence of yolk sac. You can see in the picture. Because at this stage, the fish is not capable of feeding itself. Okay, It has not developed that much. So it has the presence of yolk sac. And it draws the nutrients from this particular yolk sac. And that is the reason for its survival. Then moving on, the next, it comes to a stage where it is called fry. You can have a look at the picture as well. So basically, uh, this stage develops or uh, the fish uh, is called in this stage when the yolk sac that you were able to see in the hatchling stage disappears. Okay. So uh, now what do you infer from this? If the yolk sac is disappearing, that means the fish is developing certain uh, characteristic of, able, uh, of being able to feed itself. Okay. They have become capable enough. Because if you initially they were getting their nutrients from the yolk sac. Now, if that yolk sac has disappeared, that means it has to feed, right? Uh, without it, it would die. So the capability is being developed within the fish. So that stage is known as fry stage, okay? And the fish is nearly one to two centimeter. You can have a look at in the picture also. Then the next stage uh, is the fingerling. So you can see that from the name, the fish becomes the size of a finger, nearly 10 to 15 centimeter in size. Uh, we can see that uh, there is a gradual development of fins and scales. 
so these things start developing and you can uh, see they are they have become a bit prominent in the fish so uh, these are the three terms that you need to be aware of so when i when we uh, when they use the term fry they are talking about a stage uh, when the fish has actually developed the capability of feeding by themselves and the yolk sac has disappeared then when they talk about fingerling there is a prominent uh, at least a prominent show of fins and scales on the body of the fish uh, so these are the parts of the juvenile state so the fish when uh, becomes mature sexually it uh, is referred to as adult fish after which Uh, now we have come to the classification of aquaculture so whenever there is a classification there's always a base on uh, on which we do the so right so based on intensity it is classified into intensive semi intensive and extensive okay we are not going into the details of it in the further section we shall be dealing with the tabular column that would give us an idea regarding these types of uh, cultures then based on type of environment or rather based on the salinity of water it is classified as fresh water brackish and marine when i say fresh water the salinity or the presence of salt in the water is zero when i say brackish water the uh, presence of salt in water is less than 30 ppt that is parts per thousand so that water is referred to as brackish and if it is more than that then it is referred to as marine water that is a sea water basically we are talking about then based on the species that are stocked for farming so it can be monoculture or poly so from the name itself it is very evident that when we say monoculture only one type of species is reared polyculture there is a mix of various species okay actually when you uh, go for polyculture you are effectively utilizing each and every area of a pond okay because what you are doing is uh, you are bringing the differences to the maximum advantage okay because certain fish will be able to survive in a particular area so what you are doing is you are analyzing that completely and you are making sure that various species can coexist but there are various points also that you need to keep in mind that uh, they uh, they should not be predatory in nature when you are taking two or three species together right uh, they uh, they should be able to mature uh, at a somewhat similar time okay so it is not that one species is uh, taking uh, so for example x time to mature and the next is taking y time so it becomes a tough the harvesting process becomes really tedious so that is not going to work so these are some of the precautions or these are some of the uh, background work that is usually done when going for polyculture there are other points as well that as that are very uh, well elaborated in the concept notes you can have a look at it as well to understand it further so now uh, there are various aquaculture methods and practices that are there and these practices are uh, the division of it is based upon the type of enclosure that you use for culture okay we have seen that by aquaculture we mean that we are rearing the aquatic species right and for that we need an environment okay and that environment as we have discussed can be fresh water can be marine water or can be brackish water now the next thing that we need is an enclosure because we are doing an artificial cultivation okay we are not letting it be in its natural uh, environment we are making some form of intervention to the environment and we are increasing the production of it right for our commercial purpose okay or other, any other purpose that is uh, subjective so now you can see that based on the type of enclosure that is used it can be classified as pond culture obviously you are using pond for rearing then there is pen and cage culture there is this raceway there is recirculating aquaculture system so no need to go into the detail just know that these are the systems that exist uh, i'll just mention about a raceway when you culture the aquatic species in running water by making some arrangements that particular arrangement is referred to as raceway okay so in uh, next one that is recirculating aquaculture system what you are doing is the water that is present is again recycled and used the next day 
okay so the replacement of water is very less than 10% okay you are not replacing the entire water so there is a you can say recycling plant that is attached to the enclosure uh, within which the culture is taking place okay so these are the uh, these were the very few points about raceway and uh, uh, ras system so now we shall just have a look about the pond culture and the pen and cage culture So what we shall do is now we shall be discussing some of the important points of pond culture out here. So this pond culture can be either extensive, it can be semi-intensive or it can be intensive. Now these three systems depend upon the intensity of rearing. Okay. So when you talk about intensive cultivation, so per unit of water area, you are stuffing with more number of fishes. Okay, so smaller area more fishes and here the same area if you see or larger area if you take it is going to be less number of fishes that are going to be stopped okay so that is the difference intensive uh, within small area more number of fishes for extensive you're taking larger area okay but the number of fishes are going to be less okay semi-intensive is a midway between the two so let us just start uh, first thing let us just see the engineering design and layout so that was the first point that we were discussing so in extensive you're using very big ponds okay in semi-intensive you're using manageable sized ponds up to nearly two hectares kindly note these points for intensive pond culture you're using usually small ponds and they are the size is being 0 0.5 to 1 hectare each okay this is important point next coming to stocking rate okay or the density so obviously in intensive it is going to be maximum so per unit of water area you are going to have more number of fishes when you compare with semi-intensive and extensive in extensive it is going to be less number of fishes or moderate in semi-intensive you need to guess it is obviously going to be higher than extensive okay and it is going to be less than intensive because it's a midway between the two then coming to species used so when you're talking about species we have just seen it can be monoculture or poly so when you come to intensive because you're using a more number of fishes for per unit area of water or uh, so you're going to be going playing safe with only one species mono okay because if they have polyculture if you're doing it you need to take care or take precautions with a number of things okay and then uh, uh, the stocking of more number of fish is not going to help when there are so many species involved because they have different habits okay so all these things need to be taken into account so semi-intensive also goes with monoculture but extensive since there are very big ponds so much of area available we can take different species having different niche areas within the pond right so it can be mono or polyculture right then we come to fertilizer uh, now what happens is uh, in intensive we are already giving with so much of supplementary feeding okay we are giving protein pellets and all those things artificially so we do not need to use any fertilizer to increase the production okay so that is the case with intensive with semi-intensive we are supplying with lime to maintain the good ph okay uh, you need to understand that uh, in pond the soil and water ph need to be maintained properly and they should not be acidic in nature so for that we regularly add lime uh, now what happens in extensive we let the natural food process take place within the pond okay we do not interfere much with supplementary feeds out there so what happens is in order to give the base or give the help to uh, maintain the natural food process we give the uh, requirement of fertilizers so that the soil and all is enriched and the normal food process takes place effectively okay uh, then let us just have a look at the important ones uh, if you see cropping frequency, that is crops per year, how many times per year the same place is reared. So it is extensive, it is 2 and semi-intensive 2.5 and intensive 2.5. Automatically, you need to understand that when, it, when we are talking about intensive, we are, in our, we are maximizing our production using a smaller ponds. Okay, so it uh, comes to maturity at an early level and then we get time to uh, go for next round of culturing. Okay, so automatically it is going to be more than extensive. You need to understand that. 
okay and when you talk about the size of the products uh, or the fish in our case out here so in intensive usually we choose those fishes that have uniform sizes we need more fish in a smaller area right same goes with semi intensive and when you come to extensive uh, it is going to be variable sizes the pond is big you are going for polyculture as well so the size uh, has variable variabilities okay and there's one other important point that if you see in intensive the cost is going to be high because the input cost is going to increase the labor cost is going to increase okay but in extensive the labor cost input cost is going to be less on the other hand if you talk about productivity okay in intensive the productivity is going to be more uh, on in extensive system it uh, the productivity is going to be less okay so these are some of the important points when it comes to uh, pond culture so the next thing that we will have a look at is the pen and cage culture this is again based on the enclosure in which this rearing is taking place so as you can see in the picture that on the left hand side there is this pen culture and uh, on the right hand side there is this cage culture okay so when you're talking about pen culture and cage culture there's a difference in the type of enclosure that is provided okay so in kind of in the place of pen culture you see Uh, you are raising the fish in a kind of a enclosure okay where everywhere it is covered with meshes or nets that are used okay but the bottom is not covered this is an important point the bottom uh, of the natural uh, environment is used okay but in the case of cage culture on all the sides you are closing with mesh or it may be bamboo or it may be metal wires okay it depends upon the type of system that you are using so you can see that this particular cage out here is enclosed on all the sides okay now this kind of pen and cage culture what happens is usually what you are doing is you are making the most of the available water resources because if you are going to uh, go for pond culture you need a proper setup but here what is happening the available water resources you are maximizing uh, uh, the productivity with minimum efforts involved okay the production cost is going to be low right and you can see that in cage culture for instance though there is the bottom is covered still the, there is a possibility of water going in and out so you do not need to take the effort of cleaning the pond recycling the water all these things are avoided when you go for pen and cage culture right and obviously there is a certain kind of natural environment also that is there but at the same time you have a hold on it because you are providing a mesh you are providing a surrounding okay you can feed them as well there are certain precautions that you need to take uh, because it is an in a natural environment there is a possibility of predators like there are aquatic mammals that are there okay so uh, sometimes if there is some kind of a uh, infection or something that is prevailing in the other aquatic organism that can be contagious to the one that you are rearing in the uh, enclosure pen and cage enclosure right so these are some of the precautions that you need to take so other than that uh, this is a very effective method of aquaculture where in pen the bottom is not covered the natural bottom is used and in cage culture all the four sides are covered with uh, the mesh so these are uh, the various type of methods of rearing uh, in aquaculture so friends with this we have come to the end of this video today where we had uh, seen in detail about aquaculture so basically it's a very simple topic you need to know the meaning of it first okay be clear with it don't confuse it with other kind of cultures and fisheries right and then we had just moved on to have a look at the various terms that we come across like what is a fry what is a fingerling okay and when you uh, talk about these terms in which on which stage the fish is in okay so these are some of the very basic terms then we had moved on to see the way is yes, a classification of aquaculture we had a look as to uh, based on the intensity how it is divided uh, what are the environments in which it can be done right we had also seen that based on the species that is used it can either be monoculture it can be either polyculture right 
then we moved on to see the important aquaculture practices we had seen four okay uh, not in detail but yes we had seen uh, a very good tabular column where there were certain important points mentioned for pond culture so my kindly make sure that you are aware of the important points in that tabular column that is uh, important specifically the pond size and the stocking density and then we had moved on to see the last one that is page, uh, pen and cage culture how it effectively utilizes the natural resources available so i hope uh, you are now aware of the basic concepts that are a part of aquaculture thank you friends and happy learning